I think the whooping crane represents hope, really, to a lot of people. It represents an effort to do something good and something right and maybe correct some wrongs that were done in the past. I think that attracts people's attention. Before we could be taken to the whooping crane pen, we had to wait for another visitor to be escorted out. How did you catch him, Brett? There was something in the pond, and last night I was out there standing with the birds, and then got scared and left, and I couldn't see what the... Here comes Joey. I got, I got law enforcement coming to take him for you, so you don't have to go. Law enforcement. Yeah. Is he under arrest? <laughs> what law did he break? <laughs> Using the materials he had on hand, Brooke Pennypacker wrapped the intruder in his whooping crane feeding costume. All the cranes are okay, and Brooke is ready to lead us to their pen. Brooke works with Operation Migration. He leads the cranes from Wisconsin in ultralight plains and watches over them as they winter in the St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge. Okay, we're going out into the uh, marsh where the uh, whooping crane pen is. We have eight whooping cranes out there in the pen, and it's about a quarter of a mile to half mile walk out there and we'll be able to get up into a blind that was built by the refuge for the project and uh, get a good look at the whooping cranes. Well, what we're doing is basically establishing a second migratory flock of whooping cranes. The flock goes from Wisconsin down to Florida every year and back. Uh, it's basically an insurance policy to protect the species. The natural occurring flock goes from wood buffalo up in uh, Northwest Territories in Canada up down to Aransas, Texas every year. But if there's an oil spill over their winter habitat to ruin it, or if there's a disease problem, the species could be wiped out. So this is a second flock that we're establishing to ensure that the survival of this species of bird. With their population having dipped to about 20 in the 1940s, a lot of care has gone into reestablishing North America's tallest bird. The eight chicks are from eggs laid in nest, abandoned at Nasita National Wildlife Refuge uh, by pairs that we'd actually flown down here years ago and uh, there was a black fly infestation which uh, basically chased the adults off the nest and they stopped incubating so the, nests were, the uh, eggs were collected and they were sent to Patuxent National Wildlife Research Center in Laurel, Maryland where they were hatched and then once the chicks were hatched all the early raising of the chicks was done, all the early training was done there at Patuxent. When the birds were about 50 to 60 days old they were put in a small plane and taken to Wisconsin where they're flight trained. We spent the summer there flight training them. Brooke feeds the cranes and checks in on them at least twice a day. Paying close attention to their behavior, he can notice when something is wrong. The place that they're at is, is a good little roosting site. It's got a lot of water in it, but normally up until last, like I said, Friday, they would be doing what they're doing there out on the oyster bar. But because of the gator, I guess, um, they've been afraid to go out there. So they set up shop over there. Despite the rare small gator, after dark, they are safest within the pen. It's Brooke's job to keep them there. We have a couple things we do. We have a, a vocalizer on a bullhorn here. We have their parents' brood call on an MP3 player here. And then it goes through the, goes through the bullhorn. And sometimes that'll bring them into the pen when we play this. Sometimes we have to go out and we have to uh, swamp monster them, what we call swamp monster. And that is put a tarp, a blue tarp on. Put this over us and scare them into the pen. When they see these blue tarps, they're afraid and it scares them so that often go into the pen for security. Each class of cranes is only guided down once. They fly back on their own and are tracked. Some return to winter in the refuge. This one from the second St. Mark's class has been wintering nearby for years. It is still a species that relies on help from humans. Well, I would like to participate in the preservation of the species, so I, it's, uh, it's a kind of a thrill for me to be able to help out with that effort. For WFSU, I'm Rob Diaz, the Viegas. For more information on Operation Migration, visit operationmigration.org.